Tonight, Broken Hills water worries continue. The government now accused of a cover-up over the push to divert supplies. And Harport Lincoln's mayor plans to boost the city's population. This is Southern Cross News with Tim Hatfield. Good evening, but first tonight, the sale of the Whaler Steelworks to Liberty House has already had a strong effect on local real estate activities. Real estate agents say inquiries are up across residential and commercial properties, but they've warned us not to expect a big boom. With the future of the Wireless Steelworks now secure, it's hoped the city's housing sector can recover lost ground. Industry figures show the median prices dropped by 23% in the last year, with the state government estimating 600 homes were on the market. Real estate agent Graham Taylor says recent weeks have shown positive signs. The last month we've written quite a bit of business, uh, but really pleasing is the number of inquiries. It's, they've just been... They've been flooding in. Mr Taylor says they've made 11 sales in the last month, double the average sales rate. He says investors are looking for a good deal at the bottom end of the market. That's when buyers started to come back into the market. The prices had dropped uh, and now that people got interested in the market, investors returned. Commercial properties have also become attractive once more. In a statement to Southern Cross News, First National agent Peter Callis says several business and late industry properties have been sold. And while residential sales are patchy, he believes they'll increase as local confidence returns. Both agents, however, say we shouldn't expect a significant increase in house prices, with the market still flooded. Mr Taylor says buyers and sellers should do their homework to make sure the price is right. We have more than a portfolio of properties on the market. We also have a portfolio of buyers looking to purchase homes. And it's our role to match those up. John Hunt, Southern Cross News. The New South Wales National Party's role in alleged corruption on the Barwon Darling Rivers came under further fire this week after the state's water minister was accused of trying to change irrigation laws retrospectively. The state's water minister, Niall Blair, is accused of attempting to alter laws to give northern New South Wales irrigators more rights to water. Yesterday's question time in the New South Wales Parliament saw the state opposition sharpening its swords. They come in here and talk about daylight saving when they are in an illegal conspiracy to steal water from thousands and thousands. Labor launched a scathing attack on the state government with a strong focus on the National Party's involvement in the alleged theft of billions of litres of water from the Bar and Darling, stopping it from reaching the far west. A senior public service hand member hands over confidential documents to a lobbyist. Does he lose his job? Absolutely not. The enforcement unit set up to investigate waters uncovers massive industrial stealing on the Darling River. The National Party's response? Shut down the investigation. The National have now come under more scrutiny after a new report accused Water Minister Niall Blair of trying to change irrigation laws retrospectively to justify a decision to give a northern irrigator more rights to water. The report also stated that the mentioned irrigator had donated $10,000 to the National Party just before the 2011 state election. He is going to face serious scrutiny in the New South Wales Parliament next week in the Legislative Council when it goes back. Niall Blair went to ground today, but a spokesperson said he was trying to make changes to water sharing laws to fix a legislative mistake. He was reportedly advised by the Department of Primary Industries that two clauses in the plan contradicted each other and was advised that they needed to be amended. Labor is still pushing for a judicial inquiry into the management of the Murray-Darling Basin. He has serious questions to answer, but I think that he can short-circuit a lot of these questions by announcing an inquiry and, an, and a referral to the ICAC and a judicial inquiry into his actions and the actions of all previous national ministers before him. Patrick Reinke, Southern Cross News. A man's been found guilty of assaulting his partner on two occasions. The Port Augusta Magistrates Court today, the man was intoxicated both times and has received two months and three weeks in jail. Amelia Simpson joins us now from outside the Port Augusta Court. Amelia, the sentence, though, has been suspended. 
Yes, Tim, the man has been found guilty of aggravated assault using a weapon against his own spouse. He was sentenced here at the Port Augusta Magistrates Court this morning. He was found guilty of assault on two occasions, one occurring in Cooper Pedy and the other in Indolkna. In June last year, he hit his partner with a rock on the head at a Cooper Pedy bus stop while intoxicated. The second in February in Indolkna this year, he whipped his partner on the back with a cord. The court heard Mr Bannington admits he has a drinking problem and his partner wants to continue the relationship. His lawyer asked the magistrate not to consider a lengthy sentence as he is an older man and wants to limit his drinking. The magistrate told Mr Bannington that there is too much hurting women on the lands and that if you hurt women, you're hurting Indigenous men as well. Mr Bannington received two months and three weeks in jail, which the magistrate suspended on a 12-month good behaviour bond. He'll be required to attend a cross-borders family violence program. Tim? OK, thank you, Amelia Simpson, at the Port Augusta Magistrates Court there. Four adults and five children had to evacuate a house in Port Augusta after a fire broke out yesterday afternoon. MFS crews and police were called to the house on Seaview Road after the fire was reported. It's believed to have started in a bedroom but was confined to furniture and the ceiling. Nobody was badly injured and police say the cause of the blaze is so far undetermined. Investigations are continuing. Anyone with information is urged to contact Crime Stoppers. Port Lincoln's mayor says population growth is a priority to the region after census data showed the city fell well under the South Australian average when it came to increasing the number of residents. In the last five years, Port Lincoln has shown little growth, but with major projects in the pipeline, it could see a significant turnaround. The results are in and the statistics show that Port Lincoln is stagnating. Mayor Green was expecting growth from last year's census, but instead was shocked to see the region flatlining. If this trend continues, um, our future and the future for our kids and the future for our uh, working community um, isn't looking that great. Over the past five years, Port Lincoln's population has only grown by 34 people, not the news Mayor Green was anticipating. I almost had a press release prepared to say uh, Port Lincoln hits 15,000. To see the number uh, of 14,120 was personally really disappointing. But the numbers don't add up. The council says more people have consistently applied and been approved for housing. For the last five years, we've uh, approved something like 300 new dwellings. Uh, and yet our population by the statistics uh, measurement um, hasn't grown. The council is now determined to point the statistics in the right direction by protecting current businesses and making Port Lincoln more attractive for new business. We need to double down on our efforts to, uh, to attract businesses, to, uh, to, to make things happen and to support the sorts of developments that uh, we think could be coming. Those developments include the Iron Road project, already approved by the state government, and oil drilling off the Great Australian Bight, which is currently in the pipeline. The Mayor would also look towards federal programs if alternatives do not eventuate. To bring more people to Port Lincoln, to make it an attractive place for them to, to live and work and stay. Jason Kemp, Southern Cross News. Well, stay with us. Still to come in tonight's local news, China Connection. The Upper Spencer Gulf looks to capitalise on a major trading partner. The details ahead. Welcome back. China is on the mind of the Upper Spencer Gulf as it looks to capitalise on the second largest economy in the world. Local leaders say the region has the products to attract Chinese investment, but it needs to sell itself. China is regarded as Australia's most important trading partner, and the Upper Spencer Gulf wants a slice of the action. The three mayors were briefed last week on the work the LGA is doing to engage with the country. Lynn Brewer says it's an important step in revitalising their economy. We want to invite them into our region, show them what we've got, show them the businesses that we've got, work out what we can showcase to them. Tourism is the major target, with China Southern Airlines flying five times a week into Adelaide from December. Between the Flinders Ranges and the Cuttlefish, leaders are confident of their selling point. But Sam Johnson says securing investment in infrastructure projects is another key goal. If we're going to get new money and we're going to get big money and we're going to get new industry, that the money is in the foreign market at the moment. He also says the international backing of energy projects in the region are examples of the investment we need to chase. Every single major energy project that has either been approved and backed and financed in that region 
has all come from overseas. Mayor Brewer says the three are working together to make sure no one misses out. But as three Spencer Gulf cities, we have got a lot to offer. We're sea by the desert. John Hunt, Southern Cross News. Port Lincoln Police have hosted an information session on South Australia's recently updated gun laws. Gun owners, mainly from farming areas, went along to seek answers about the newly proclaimed Firearms Act. Owners will have a year to comply with the new gun laws, ensuring safer housing for guns and new regulations for gun owners. The information night was one of many held around South Australia to bring the community up to speed with the safer regulations. Port Lincoln is delving into the issues drugs and alcohol creates in the community during a number of action forums this week. The region's drug action team will focus on the impacts of drugs with the aim of understanding what services the community requires. It's not an easy subject to talk about, but one that's vital to overcoming. Figureheads from Port Lincoln's Drug Action Team and SA Community Services today gathered for a drug action forum to understand how to prevent addiction. One thing for us as workers to say what needs to happen is actually much more important to hear from people themselves about what would make a difference for them in their lives. The forums were organised after survey results found drugs and alcohol impacted regional communities the most and users were unaware on how to find treatment. Today's forum focusing on fundamental changes. It's within the household or your community um, it's, it's fixing the mums and dads, which, you know, if we don't fix them, their kids will, might have the same issue as well. So it just becomes a vicious circle. The forum was attended by the South Australian Medical Research Institute, which is studying the impacts drugs have on small communities. We're certainly finding that um, ice is an issue, you know, obviously across those 10 communities. It's not just an Aboriginal issue, it's an issue across the you know, across the community. The forum will look to seek answers to help those affected find the correct treatment and guide others away from drug abuse. We're definitely interested in uh, helping people stop using uh, who want to do that, but also just to reduce the costs of using. So, so that's a harm reduction approach. Jason Kemp, Southern Cross News. Well, stay with us. We return after the break. A close shave for a beauty queen. Why she's ready to lose her locks for a good cause. The details ahead. <laughs> Welcome back. 20-year-old Jasmine Elliott from Peterborough is taking on the world's greatest shave. She's the only South Australian contestant in the Miss British Empire beauty pageant and plans to shave off all her hair on the eve of the beauty contest. After witnessing the effects of blood cancer firsthand, Jasmine has participated in the world's greatest shave three times already. She's the only model representing South Australia at the Miss British Empire beauty pageant and she hopes to raise awareness for the life-threatening disease by showing you don't have to have hair to be beautiful. I've decided to shave my hair for the beauty pageant because I want to show people that beauty isn't skin deep and all the stereotypes associated with pageants are nothing but stereotypes. Jasmine has already reached her initial fundraising goal. Initial fundraising goal was only 250 just because it was so close to the pageant. Um, since then I've raised over $700 and it's still rocketing higher. I've set my goal to 1000 now. Showing people there's a much greater side to pageants than just looks, Jasmine says she hopes to walk down the runway inspiring the audience and judges to take on the challenge, while diminishing the perception of what it looks like to be beautiful and to be a model. She will be competing in London later this month. Rachel Nell, Southern Cross News. A former Broken Hill local has returned home as part of a special journey across Australia. Belinda Adams has been driving across the country in her eye-catching purple bus to raise awareness of the effects of brain injuries. A special journey for a special cause. The whole process behind my trip is wanting to raise awareness from community to community because I think it is a community issue. Belinda Adams is travelling around Australia in what she calls Belinda's Big Bus, breaking down barriers for brain injury. She stopped off in the Silver City this week as part of the 8,000 kilometre trip of six states in five weeks. The trip is all to raise awareness for brain injuries, something her son had to go through. I had to come to Broken Hill because, like I said, it is my hometown and they offered me a lot of support, community support, um, when my son had his brain injury. We definitely need the awareness because it's an invisible disability and uh, I think a lot, a lot of people I've met along the journey just want to be heard and um, know that someone understands. She says we need to open more doors for people with brain injuries and support them. 
It starts by raising awareness and opening doors for employment and independence. We need more employers to open doors in the community to um, employing people with different abilities and all abilities so that we have more an inclusive society. Belinda left the Silver City earlier this morning. Her next stop, the Northern Territory. Patrick Groenke, Southern Cross News. Well, time now to see what's biting out on the Gulf at the moment. Here's this week's Fish and Tips. Welcome to another week around the Gulf Fishing Tips in Port Pree. I've got to tell you, there's some fantastic things happening out there at the moment. Over the horseshoe in the berry weed, you'll find yourself some good feet of King George whiting. And when you go a little bit further along that bank around the Ward Spit area, make sure you stop at the top end of Ward Spit, you'll see some big King George there also. A few squid still floating around snapper on the pipes, so work those ones up a little bit. And it's all close to September as we're getting closer. The snook is starting to come round, so they tell me there's a few out there the size of baseball bats. So have a crack at those while you're there. G'day and welcome to this, this week's fishing tips from Port Augusta, Jewel North. Well, the jewel's been going really well at the moment. The whales are up and around that 16k mark, so just keep an eye on them. Just remember not to get the boats in too close there. Snapper down at the seabird. Some big squid uh, right on the front of the shacks, but the big wild winds we had, uh, try for the King George Whiting up on top of the banks at the high tide. They've been really big, uh, but not great numbers. Whalers fishing report this week, it has been a little bit quieter with the bad wind and rain that we've had, but there still has been some good reports coming in. There's been quite a few nice sized snapper uh, between the two to six kilo mark, and they've been coming out from the Becky Point areas. Um, so if you go down there and hit those rocky points, Best time to target those have been just on sundown and also in the same area there have been some really nice sized salmon right up to the two to three kilo mark. Um, off the local foreshore it's been really hit and miss for the silver whiting and out on the boats again still a few King George whiting coming in from most of the areas and the snapper have been very slow this week. G'day and welcome to Fishing Tips in Port Lincoln. Uh, the reports we have got have uh, indicated a few squid within the bay. They're the mainstay for the uh, local boaties at the moment. Um, the uh, whiting fishing has been better outside of the bay, so you're looking at uh, the passage, so down around Taylors and also down towards Thistle. Um, over in Coffin Bay, within the bay system there have been a few whiting, but they're a little bit patchy. Um, but the salmon trout and tommies have been uh, filling up the bag down there. Um, uh, down on the south coast of Port Lincoln, the Sleaford Dewana stretch, there have been some schools of salmon down there, especially on days with northerly wind. It looks like we're in for a rough weekend again this week, but uh, good luck if you do manage to get out, and we'll be back next week with more fishing tips. Well, stay with us after the break. A look at the Friday forecast and your weekend weather. Welcome back. Turning to the weather now. Another wet day today. 15 the tops are quite cool for Port Augusta and Wyala. Port Lincoln also showers at 15 today. Rain and 13 in Port Piri. The same today for Broken Hill. On the national satellite, as that low moves into the east, another heavy cloud band is set to hit us with more rain over the weekend. Out on the waters, the winds to 30 knots and to the north, the seas mainly southerly and to a metre and a half. Sunrise at 11 past 7. So another grey day tomorrow. Showers and 17 for Port Augusta, 16 for Port Piri and 15 in Port Lincoln, an overcast 17 in Wyala, cloud and 14 for Broken Hill. And then looking at the weekend, more showers about 16 both days for Port Lincoln and for Woodner as well. Cleve on at 15, Wyala also wet across the weekend, 17 for Saturday and Sunday. Port Augusta clearing up briefly on Saturday with 18 before the showers return on Sunday. Kadena 15 both days are looking fairly wet. Port Perry 16 on Saturday and 15 for Sunday, just 12 degrees this weekend in Clare. Broken Hill a cloudy 15 for Saturday and then a fine at 16 on a Sunday. And that is the local news for this evening. Don't forget you can stay up to date with us on Facebook and on Twitter. You can also get in touch via email. We'll see you back here tomorrow night from 6.30. I'm Tim Hanford from the team here at Southern Cross News. Have a good evening. Good night.